I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Monday December the 16th where I try not to abuse this forum too much with uh, social matters but uh, I think we found one that all of us can get behind and I just wanted to bring it to your attention and it's called the All-American Beef Battalion and what it does is it feeds steaks to our troops that's been deployed uh, both current and, and even past troops but just shows appreciation for them and it feeds them steaks and uh, brings steaks to events, uh, homecomings, different things like that but I think it's a, it's a really positive deal and uh, they're having a big fundraiser for it in Oklahoma City at the Oklahoma National Stockyards here today. Uh, it won't start before 11 a.m. but uh, at 11 a.m. they have a rollover auction and uh, they've raised a lot of money, over $425,000 since they started benefiting this cause in 2011. But uh, I think it's a positive thing. Uh, there's a fellow by the name of Clyde Runyon, the late Clyde Runyon, uh, that's not with us anymore. He was a Vietnam vet and owned 3C Feeder Manufacturing in Mill Creek, Oklahoma. He passed away earlier this year and he has been the one that has been donating the steer that they have the rollover auction at and the sale ring at uh, Oklahoma City. Uh, his family is going to continue that legacy. They're going to be donating the steer uh, for today's auction uh, that they'll be reselling there. And uh, I'd really encourage you guys to get behind this cause. Uh, call in to somebody there and pledge some money if, if you know a buyer that's in there tell them you know you'll take a stab at it for you know however much you can afford to get in there uh, you can go to this website it's called stakesfortroops.com uh, all together there and uh, you, can, you can get on there and, and donate money there it's through PayPal uh, you can mail in uh, on that website you can see a website uh, an address that you can mail into if you're in Oklahoma City you can drop off a check at uh, National's office there, National Livestock, in the Exchange Building, and that's room 103. And there's a phone number you can even uh, call in and pledge your support at 800-310-0220. But uh, it's called the All-American Beef Battalion. It feeds steaks to troops. And uh, I think that's a pretty positive thing that everybody could get behind. What else happened this past week? Uh, we saw the market just kind of up and down a little bit all week long until we got to, to Friday and right in the face of, of uh, the Democrats trying to impeach our president, which they may get the vote done of impeachment, but that doesn't mean he's going to get kicked out of office because there won't be a, a firm from the Senate, so uh, it's just all for show. But in the face of all that, uh, President Trump probably got one of the biggest trade deals that, that we've ever had as a country uh, started off on the right foot with they approved the phase one of the US-China trade agreement and, and in the initial announcement said that uh, China has kind of pledged to purchase 40 to 50 billion dollars of ag products annually for the next two years anyway. Uh, we don't know exactly what how it's going to be spread out. I'm sure it'll be mostly grains, but it'll include some proteins uh, because of the African swine fever that they've been struggling with. They're really short of proteins, and they need as much as they can get. But that thing really, that announcement really cranked the board up, and we saw big gains on Friday that hung in there. We saw it affect the cash market even because they were kind of in the middle of trade there. So we saw some gains there. Even our feeder cattle auctions, of course, you know, they're hedging off of that. So they, they saw it too. But uh, a big, big boost for ag right there with that U.S.-China trade agreement. Uh, we also saw earlier in the week last week that uh, it looks like we're going to get that uh, USMC, the U.S., Mexico, and Canada trade agreement going. It doesn't change a whole lot of things. Uh, for for our trade right now but it's just positive to get those things sewed up because it kind of holds trade back a little bit whenever you can't uh, get the agreement signed and, and put away but uh, we saw a big Midwestern snow come across uh, a lot of our, our Midwestern auctions are having big uh, replacement sales 
right now there's a lot of folks that, that had enough of last winter and it's looking like it's going to be about as bad this winter and they don't want to have to go through another uh, spring flood like they did this past spring up there a lot of people are getting out I, I hate to see people getting out of the cattle business I, I hate to see uh, decisions come across that are going to force more people out of the cattle business it, it dries up our small communities uh, and it's just bad for the for our country altogether but uh, a lot of dispersals up there in Nebraska and Iowa places like that uh, there's a lot of good replacement uh, quality uh, cattle out there and high genetic quality out there for for young people that want to get in but uh, how they're going to get alone who knows and you, you just can't find any plots of land out there anywhere that you can pay for by running cows on them. Uh, so you pretty much have to have it handed down, uh, given to you by your uh, by your your parents or your grandparents or something like that. And it's really, really uh, thinning down the number of people we have in the cattle business. And I think we all see that out there. But let's talk about the board and then get into the markets. The board for last week, December live cattle futures. Monday was down two cents, Tuesday down 30, Wednesday up 70 cents, Thursday down 15, and Friday, like I said, with that announcement of that trade deal, up a dollar 95 on the close Friday to end the week with December live cattle at 122.37, February 127.55 on the close. January feeder cattle Monday was down two cents, Tuesday up 12. Wednesday was up a dollar twelve. Thursday down twenty two cents, and big boost for feeder cattle on Friday, up three dollars and twelve cents. With January feeder cattle ending the week at one forty five sixty seven, now back to a premium to what our index levels are at. March ended the week at one forty six and a quarter. Uh, we may see some deliveries uh, this week if we don't get this uh, fat cattle market up more. We're getting late in the contract month on live cattle. It's up there at uh, 122.37 like I said at the end of the week. We tried to get the market up wholly to 120. Uh, saw some trade that level and a little bit higher but weren't able to get the bulk of the trade up there especially in the southern plains so uh, that's going to be a threat this week. It's probably going to to uh, put a little bit of pressure on your board to try to get it back in line, uh, but it could boost your, your cash fat cattle. I would say the pressure would come a lot easier than boosting the fat cattle price, of course, but we never know what we're going to see. But uh, uh, we're in good shape here fundamentally, I'll tell you what. But you look at last week's trade on, on uh, steers and heifers, negotiated cash in the five area. Uh, live sales range from 117 to 120 mostly 119 and it was mostly before Friday. We saw most of our trade happen on Thursday still fairly light. It's going to be kind of a disappointing trade probably if they could give that money uh, to everyone like they were offering in places Friday then you could get a lot of trade but uh, mostly 119 with a weighted average through Thursday at 118.81 that does not include Friday's sales. Uh, your dress steers and heifer sales range from 188 all the way up to 194, but it was mostly at 188. And our, our uh, weighted average on dress steers was 188.11, all that through Thursday. Now, on Friday, which kind of starts a new week for the way that they keep the, uh, the count on the markets for the week on, your, on negotiated fat sales with USDA, uh, we started seeing significant trade on Friday. Iowa uh, had confirmed sales on Friday of 7,600 head, live sales from 118 to 122 with a lot of 120 and uh, dressed at 187 to 190, mostly 190. So we were steady with a week ago with the previous week all the way through Thursday but then Friday with the board up because of that uh, trade deal announcement then we got with live sales kind of steady to a buck higher than the bulk of a previous week and then dress sales two bucks higher. Uh, we don't know how much is, was going to be more volume whether it was going to be before Friday or after Friday's announcement but uh, going to be boosting our, our weighted averages up there a little bit and, and guys are getting more for their fat cattle as a whole. Nebraska on Friday confirmed sales of 8200 
uh, live sales 118 to 119 kind of split there uh, it was kind of hard to there's a lot of mud on those cattle it's hard to get a, a live bid out there right now they mostly want to go dressed uh, so they can get them with the hide off and the dress sales 188 to 190 mostly 190 so there's your two bucks higher Kansas uh, just a few at 119 and that was uh, steady with Thursday and steady with what happened a week ago but uh, didn't see that uh, in the southern plains uh, get boosted up there so they didn't see the boost and they traded quite a few there on Thursday that way especially in Kansas Texas and Colorado market reports did not print because of confidentiality and this lies the problem like I told you they had that meeting on Thursday which tried to address this issue which they've got to get some things amended and some things changed uh, while that mandatory price reporting bill, uh, bill or law comes up uh, to, to re-up it on uh, September of, the, of 2020 here so uh, maybe they'll get something done but uh, it's it's frustrating when you're trying to see what's happening at the market and and you don't get that information you know private sources we know kind of what goes on in those areas but we don't get the whole confirmed deal uh, you know USDA can be wrong or right but it's official I guarantee you that and uh, and everybody just buys into it so you have to have that official call but uh, we didn't see uh, well, one place we do see uh, market transparency, transparency is with consolidated beef producers and they did not trade any cattle uh, in, in the southern plains to speak of last week uh, this past week they traded cattle the week before and they they're the main reason they got the 119 but uh, so they didn't fall for the 119 they were wanting 120 or better this past week never did never did get it never was able to get it and didn't get it on Friday so they'll kind of be tough to trade with this week uh, as we can pretty much consider this week the the end of the year because we're gonna get into the holidays and and uh, so but but you know the Packers have been telling everybody that they were done buying cattle for this year for several weeks and it's amazing that they came in aggressively trying to buy cattle on Friday on an up market uh, whenever they they didn't need any but that's that's just uh, your Packer psychology just always we don't need anything our needs are filled but uh, where they've been getting the bonus out there the premium on the fat cattle western Nebraska and Colorado uh, did hear some 120 50 so that would have been a full buck higher there too uh, late late in the week last week but uh, we should at least get our weighted averages uh, here on Monday and on our next visit we'll talk about those box beef cutout values down hard I tell you what it was a rough week last week for the Packers had to pay more money for cattle and uh, box beef cutout values down hard and uh, and but at the same time big big time movement a lot of volume in there kind of clean things up at the end of the year here and, and that's always a good thing but our demand is outstanding uh, it just couldn't be better uh, domestically and it's just gonna be improving gangbusters here for export especially as we move into the new year these new trade deals and the shortage of protein around the globe but let's look at uh, box beef cutout values. Your average trade for last week on choice cuts, 219.14 on the weighted average on a big volume. That was down almost $9. That is huge. Down $8.83. Your select cuts, the average trade for last week, 204.47, down 573 from the weighted average from the previous week. Now we've got that choice select spread sucked back down there kind of where it needs to be under $15, $14.67 on your weighted averages, but 844 loads of cuts, grinds, and trimmings. That is ginormous. And that's and dur during the, the, the days of the week last week, we had some of the biggest trade trading days that we've seen since way back in, in the summer of 2011, but huge movement. Uh, at lower prices, yes, but big time movement. Uh, let's talk about your feeder cattle markets, or uh, let's talk about the slaughter first. Your slaughter for last week, 662,000. Uh, that was 17,000 less than the big record that we set the previous week, but 8,000 more. 
uh, than the same week a year ago. So we're still doing pretty good. You wonder why was it so much lower than last week? Well, we're still trying to get things leveled back out now that we have Finney County and, Can and Holcomb, Kansas back up. But uh, we, we really backed up, backed off the Saturday harvest. So uh, your, your Saturday harvest was a lot lower than it's been here as we were moving through the weeks without that big plant there in, in western Kansas but uh, only 54,000 was estimated for Saturday slaughter but uh, your steer weights are up big steer weights come out and and they were 12 pounds larger than the same week a year ago about the same as the previous report but uh, 12 pounds bigger that's a bunch that counts up for a lot of cattle too so you can really say we're, we're we're uh, producing a lot of, of red meat and we've been having all-time record hog slaughter here the last several weeks so lots of red meat on the market and we're still moving it despite fake meat and and everybody all the vegans against us uh, it, it, it couldn't be any better really domestically anyway let's talk about your feeder cattle market your real-time index 143.36 actually up 42 cents to end the week uh, you compare that uh, to your CME cash feeder cattle index, the latest one available, 143.40. So off 0 .04, 4 cents. Uh, and so that's 4 cents a hundred, not 4 cents a pound. So that's, uh, that, that's keeping up with that thing pretty good. I talked about uh, Oklahoma City having that big uh, uh, rollover auction there for the All-American All Beef Battalion. I hope you guys do get interested in that and like I say I don't get on here and beg for money very often but I, I just think it's positive for your cattle producers, it's positive for beef, it's positive for our country, it's patriotic, it supports our troops and, and how could you not be behind something like that. But Oklahoma City about 10,000 here on Monday continuing to have big volume as this is the last sale of the week of the year for them. They won't be having another feeder cattle auction till till uh, we get into January, be closed two full weeks there. Joplin Regional Stockyards, uh, they're going to sleep in here this Monday, not start until 7.30 in the morning, and I mean, that that's really lagging for them, because usually it's 5, and, or usually 6, but sometimes 5 on a big day, but only estimating 5,000 head, but they do have 20 loads of yearlings here on Monday, but they're going to have another sale on Thursday, another wean back special, and expecting a bigger run for that, and then that will be their last feeder cattle sale for the year. But how'd your markets uh, go last week uh, on your in your cash markets, your feeder cattle, unevenly steady, and they were just up here and, and down there, and, and they were some better uh, maybe early in the week, and then backed off a little bit midweek, and then come back on Friday, of course, with the board. So it was just unevenly here and there. Sometimes, uh, you know, your heavier uh, feeders were selling better always if, the, if they had true yearlings they are selling at a premium to to the big calves but but sometimes on your on your uh, lighter weight feeders you know your your wean calves that uh, are big enough to go right into the feedlot but just depended on where you were at and uh, and what you were selling now the big thing that was pretty much constant throughout the country last week is your steer heifer premium is getting wider uh, everybody wants steers and, and your heifers are finding fewer friends. So uh, most of our demand right now is coming out of the Midwest, a lot of farmer feeders, a lot of guys that are just finishing up with their harvest and, uh, and they want what they want. Uh, they, they don't have to have steers but that, that's what they want. They don't have to have the long strings of the one iron all black cattle but that's what they want. So they got the money honey, they're going to get what they want. And uh, and it's it your your middleweight heifer calves are finding few friends, especially your lower quality ones. And then if they're not weaned or, or they're not uh, the quality's not very good, uh, they're crossed up, they're colored up, they're spotted up, uh, things like that. I I mean they can get down there nearly for nothing. And uh, I tell you what, it, it's hard to sell them. But uh, your your Right, your market was better at the end of the week and it'll be better here on Monday too. We're going to finish out the week or the year really good on this last full week of trading. And uh, so you guys that waited and, and hard weaned your calves, uh, good for you. You're going to get uh, a bonus here. But uh, you, you know, the, if you want to order some, some cattle, 
uh, especially out of the southeast, you better get in your your order early this morning here on Monday because a lot of a lot of the sales won't even have a market after Wednesday and then be closed two full weeks. So you you won't uh, you're just gonna get you're just gonna make a mess, especially for your order buyer if if you don't get your orders in here for Monday and get some of these early week cattle bought. But uh, let's talk about a few of your your uh, big sales that we had late in the week last week. Some high quotes. How about Mankato livestock in Mankato, Kansas? There on Friday. Look at these loads of seven and mostly eight weight steers right here. Very impressive, including in there. Uh, the biggest eye opener I saw was 85 head of 879 pound steers at 150.10, and then Burwell, Nebraska. Uh, of course, they always have big sales. That's one of those Highway 20 Yellow Brick Road sales up there. Burwell's got as good a quality as there is anywhere up there in in that part of the country. And of course, those are the fanciest cattle in the world right there. But Burwell, Nebraska, had some NHTC calves sell right there. You see it on our automated feed. 81 head of 541 pound steers bring 181.75. Coming to you right here in Virginia and uh, going to be speaking to the Abingdon uh, Feeder Cattle Association on Monday night here and uh, spending most of the day uh, with my good buddy uh, Butch Foster, the marketing agent for the Virginia Cattlemen's Association and I tell you what, he knows everything there is to know about cattle in the state of Virginia. He's going to drive me around and, and show me some country and, and we're going to look at some cattle on Monday and really looking forward to that. So we'll talk to you on our next visit.